President Jacob Zuma's sudden move to abandon his request for the State of Capture report to be sent back to the public protector for further investigation has left many confused. And the about turn has also left the fate of his review plea into advocate Tulima Donzela's remedial action in limbo. The presidency issued a statement to clarify the reasons that prompted the U-turn. President Jacob Zuma says he's awaiting the finalization of the review plea to establish a commission of inquiry and not through dictation by the public protector. And given the undertaking in Parliament, it was a logical conclusion not to ask the court to refer the matter back to the public protector for further investigation if the plea is successful. Zuma says the abandonment of the prayer will provide him an opportunity to act on what he said in Parliament in case his plea succeeds. And the retraction caught the opposition respondents unawares. The DA slammed the move and termed it bizarre and nonsensical. The council are given until the 31st of October to make supplementary arguments as judgment on the main plea is reserved. Well, the Democratic Alliance is appalled at this last minute manipulation of the court processes. Uh, it's been over a year since the public protector's report was published. We have waited a year while the president has persisted in his uh, action that this should be reviewed. Now at the last minute, he does a U-turn, which has the effect of saying either the court sets the entire process aside or the public protector's report must stand. But either way, um, if the uh, uh, president succeeds in his appeal, it will shut down both the public protector's uh, investigation and the commission's investigation. In other words, the real agenda of the president all the way along was to shut down any inquiry. And yesterday, President Jacob Zuma abandoned a significant part of his original application. He initially wanted the court to review the public protector's remedial action, asking him to set up a judicial commission and with the judge are being selected by the chief justice. And if the remedial action is set aside, then the state of capture report must be sent back to the public protector for further investigation. And now the president no longer wants the report referred back to the public protector, but his main plea still stands. And joining us in studio, Udo Fruza, independent political analyst, Carl Niehaus is MKMVA, a member, uh, an NEC member, and General Bantu Nomisa, president of the United Democratic Movement. Good evening to you and thanks so much for joining us. I mean, at what a ruckus, uh, General Holomisa, we'll start with you in terms of uh, this tactical move from President Jacob Zuma and what this means uh, for the uh, public protector state of capture report. Well, this matter is still in court. We hear that uh, the judge yesterday said uh, to the players involved that they must submit a two-page document each and uh, tell them what are the consequences of this withdrawal at the last minute. So we would like to, to preempt that outcome. Secondly, uh, President Zuma has been saying they are going to appoint a commission of inquiry. What I would suggest, if I were in his boots, I would simply delegate that uh, job to, to, to Deputy President, because that is presidency, and then work closely with the uh, public protect and make sure that uh, all the angles, everything will be uh, investigated. Zuma should uh, say, yes, I have not done anything, but uh, the proximity of my family to the Gupta family uh, has sort of uh, compromised me, myself, himself, his party, and the country as a whole, and his government. Because as we speak now, there are institutions in this country which are linked to that uh, company, the Guptas. And uh, who is central to this? Every now and again, you'll find that there is a South African family 
which keeps on popping up, he facilitate for this for this company. So the best way for him, he must delegate the powers to appoint a commission and say, I might be conflicted, or there is a perception, but the presidency must must take the the the, 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 the findings forward. And I wouldn't mind uh, Cyril would even go and, and talk to the chief justice, request a judge. Everybody would be happy because he's not implicated in this Gupta thing. Yeah, General Holomisa, just for clarity as well, does the Constitution make provision for if the president is implicated or found wanting or there's suspicion that he cannot perform his executive duty of appointing a, a judiciary or a, a judicial inquiry? And if that is so, does uh, the public protector's uh, remedial action not encroach on his constitutional right? No, you are, see, you are discussing this case now. I've told you that Zuma, who has challenged that argument we are presenting, abandoned it yesterday. And then to, to, by Friday, tomorrow, we must show cause. I mean, so uh, what, kind, what implication mm. would this entail now that the, there is this assault? I'm not going to answer you on that, because that one, that is the... What the judges must say. I'm sorry. No, not a problem. We appreciate your time nonetheless. Carl Niehaus, MKMVA NEC member, good evening to you uh, and thanks for joining us. Just in terms of the confusion that this uh, retraction from the president had caused, but of course we are aware that his main plea uh, to review the remedial action is, uh, still stands. Uh, do you welcome the, this move from the president? And in your view, how do we interpret it? Uh, is it meant to delay the, the, the process or is it meant uh, to, to win a battle on the part of uh, Zuma? Well, as far as I can see, there is absolutely no confusion. The president is still standing with his main request and that is that the court should rule that he as the president in terms of the constitution has the right to appoint a commission and also who will chair that commission that remains as far as the other issue that he's decided to drop uh, that was his prerogative that was his right to drop that issue if he wanted to and he had done so i don't think it is necessary for us to beat about the bush here President Zuma has got, in terms of the Constitution, the right to appoint the Commission and to appoint the judge that will chair that Commission. He has said that he intends to appoint a Commission. He has said so in Parliament. And that intention is reaffirmed. The only thing that we need to deal with here is the right of the President to do so, which I believe constitutionally he has. And obviously the court will have to rule on that matter. So there's no confusion and there's also no need for us to try and stay away from commenting on this particular issue because the Constitution is clear about it. Let's see what the judge rules on this. But I believe that the president acted perfectly within his rights to decide to proceed with the main plea that he had to the court and at the same time to drop the secondary plea and I believe that that particular decision of his will help us to move forward and it will probably help to make the, the, the work of the judge easier and probably also help to make the appointment of the commission eventually and speeding up of the process for a judicial commission to be done faster than rather delayed. And I also your, want yeah. to emphasize that hopefully when we get to the point, yes, can I just make that point? Hopefully when we get to the point where a commission is appointed, it will be able to investigate the whole issue of state capture and not a narrow definition as it was dealt with as far as I can read and see in the report of the previous public protector. All right, the question around, and I paraphrase here, General Abantu Holomisa saying that the president ideally, or he's got a moral obligation to delegate this function to Cyril Ramaphosa, deputy president, because the president is implicated in this particular matter. In your view, should the president, or is that even a viable option to recuse himself at this stage? Well, I don't think it is necessary for the president 
so to say, recuse himself. The president has got the constitutional right to appoint the judge and this commission, and we should not preempt what the findings of the commission will be. We cannot come and base it on the particular proposals and suggestions that come out of the report of the public protector to now say that the president is conflicted. Let a commission decide, but the president at this stage cannot, in terms of his own actions, preempt that the decision of the commission, and he certainly cannot prejudice himself, we shouldn't expect that from him, and he should continue to execute his constitutional right to appoint the commission, including also who the chair of the commission is. All right, please stay with us. We have Udo Fruza. Just your observation, Udo. I think many of us were very uh, sort of thrown back uh, in the sense that you didn't anticipate it, number one, that he would make this partial uh, retraction. And secondly, what does it mean then for the, the entire process going forward? Thank you. First of all, I must say, I don't know which is worse, the traffic in Johannesburg or the judgment or the, the, the judge hear, the hearing in the in court. Yeah, it it's, is it's very murky waters. Murky waters in both ways. It's terrible. I believe the battle will be won by the president unless some new material will be added. And I don't think that the, uh, it is also clearly the role of the opposition all the time to hammer on certain things and believing that these, they must be hammered until they are weak and be taken over. The DA is known to be hammering the ANC all the time and so is the EFF. So there is actually nothing new. There is, there is a court case in the form of a court case and there, but there will be many cases hammering the ANC coming up, up until December this year. Mm. And, and uh, Carl, I think the clarity that I'm seeking here is that is it indeed bizarre or nonsensical? Is that a fair uh, comment to make considering that uh, how far the process has come? And this is part of the plea, it forms part of the plea that the president uh, sought in the first place. Well, I don't think it's bizarre or nonsensical for the president to have taken the positions that he had taken today. He is still insisting, quite correctly, that it is his constitutional right to constitute this commission and to appoint whoever is to chair the commission. And it was also his right, in terms of his presentation to the court, to decide whether he's going to drop this issue of a review of the report of the public protector. I believe, as I've repeatedly said now, that this will help us to move forward, it will help us to speed up the process, and I really do believe that it is important that we must have a commission of inquiry into the whole matter of state capture, as long as we make sure that it deals with the whole issue of state capture and doesn't concentrate on just one small section or part of our history. State capture in South Africa has been with us for decades, if not centuries, and let us investigate it properly rather than to try and use the concept of state capture for political purposes. Yeah, and the prospects of success, and I understand that this is a matter of sub uh, and we would be speculating, but certainly the uh, president must have a, a, a card up his sleeve, knowing that this process in terms of the constitutional protection of his executive duties is something that cannot be eroded, even by the public protector, that he has a sense uh, that he'll, he'll reach success in terms of the plea regarding the remedial action. Well, I believe that he will succeed in terms of this particular plea and that he will succeed, that the court will have to rule in his favour that the Constitution provides him with his presidential rights and duties to execute them, to, commit, to get this commission in place and also to appoint the chair of the commission. I'm pretty sure that the president will succeed with this plea because the Constitution is unequivocal and clear about his rights in this regard. Mm. Would I just your, your uh, view in the how this matter has dragged on? I think it's over a year. Yes, the report was rushed because at that time a public protector was um, on her way out effectively. And secondly, there were a lot of questions in the um, dissatisfaction that processes weren't thoroughly ventilated, including witnesses being interviewed or the president being given a fair chance. So long story short, we now sit with this particular matter. Do you think it is slowly winding down to a conclusion or is this a, just the beginning of another lengthier process? It will be a, a process that will be intensified, particularly now in November, 
coming up to the December 19, 2017 conference of the African National Congress. It makes it very, very difficult to, to place things just before the conference. So the, the state capture, for example, has been around since 1990 and has been stepped up since then. And many of the politicians who met in Lusaka, in Dar es Salaam, in London, and, and were, fated, were fated by, by, by big business in this country. Not only by big business in this country, but from, from Britain, from the US, Germany, P Portugal, and many other countries who had an interest in this part of the world. So I believe the Commission of Inquiry is important to create a more a trustworthy situation around the president himself. Mm. And Mr. Niehaus, your, your view on that, if the president had the intention of setting up a judicial inquiry, he would have done so by now, because we know that he's got the powers and the authority uh, that he can do it on his own volition. Why then uh, this particular lengthy process if he had committed to setting up a judicial process or commission? Well, the president needed to clarify a couple of matters, and you also know that it is important that when this commission is eventually appointed, that it will have also the support of the general public in South Africa. We've had the opposition playing the usual political opposition games, and you know that the main issue that they raised was whether the president should be able to appoint this commission and appoint the chair of the commission because they wanted to cast doubt on his right to do so. And obviously, if he did so without going through part of this process, he would have been in a problem. It was also the recommendation of the public protector, the former public protector, that the president should not himself appoint this commission, and especially the chair of the commission. So the clarity about this particular issue is important because ultimately we want a commission that will act in terms of the law and will be clear about it and the rights and the position of the president has to be clarified. I believe the president is right to say that he's got the right to appoint the commission, that he's got the right to appoint the chair of the commission especially, and that he insists on getting this right clarified and clearly stated by the court. That is the correct way to go. And I believe the court will ultimately rule in the president's favor because the constitution is clear and unequivocal about his rights in that regard. Yeah. Uh, and Udo, your, your view, if the, the commission were to be set up as per uh, the president's right and um, the, the decision to do so at whatever other time as he's made the commitment, there will be a backlash if it's not according to the prescription of the public protector's remedial action. Well, President Zuma is definitely not a seasoned old fox. He knows what is going on. He understands the situation very clearly. He's got a very strong legal team, and the legal team knows exactly how to advise him on every single aspect of the situation and the developments. He knows what's going on, what's coming his way, and he'll handle it. He's handled everything so far so well. So I'm not fearful at all. I'm not scared in any way that he might blunder around and, and fall apart and not make it. Mm. He's, he's strong enough and intelligent enough and seasoned enough to handle it well. Yeah, so this is the last stretch, and it's not about to trip over his shoelaces, as Certainly it were. Not. Certainly not. He's, he's too, too well informed. He's just too strong for that. Until now, he's proven that he's too strong for all these things. Mm. So he's, 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 he's definitely in charge. Okay, Carl, you know, for, again, to understand, and I'm no legal expert, but um, in how the president will survive this particular um, challenge, uh, let's call it that for a lack of a better term and and it, what the concerns are for the ANC because we know within the factions and the divisions there are some uh, who have been calling for the president including in the leadership for the president to step down well look I don't think survival is really even a question here the president will get through this quite easily because the law is quite clear about it and let us be very clear the recommendations of the public protector is not law the Constitution is law. The Constitution states very clearly the President's rights. The public protector, through her recommendation, tried to usurp and to cramp the President's rights. That cannot be right. That cannot be allowed. It is a principled matter that we deal with here that the public protector should not try or should not have tried to encroach on the rights given to the president in the constitution. And the president actually had no other option 
but to immediately address this issue because he also has an important task to make sure that the Constitution, as it has been written, is protected. His rights in that Constitution must be protected, and that is exactly what he's doing by asking this main remedial action from the court. So I believe he will sail through this. I cannot see that the court will come to any other conclusion but that he has the constitutional right to appoint the commission and the chair of the commission, and then we will proceed in that manner. So the president is, as, uh, as far as I can see, on a pretty easy playing field at this moment, and he will be able to move ahead once the court has made its ruling. Okay, but a curious question, though, the timing of having to relinquish or retract this particular plea of sending the report uh, back to um, the public protector for further investigation. Was it even necessary, Mr. Colney House? Well, I think the court process has played its way, so the timing of this particular decision of the president was also tied up with how the court process has played out. And as I've indicated to you before, I believe that this will help us to move forward. It will also make it possible to move faster in terms of the final decision of the judge on this matter, because now we have a very clear matter of law that the judge can decide on rather than the other issue, which was more complicated in terms of also the particular recommendation of the public protector. So I think this is a good decision from the side of the president and his legal team, and it certainly eases also the duty and the burden that there is on the judge. And I think we will come through with a faster decision and therefore the, also the ability and possibility to proceed with this commission hopefully faster than it would have been if both the pleas of the president were still on the table. Mm. And, and, you know, just fast forward, and I, my imagination here is, uh, is, is uh, on steroids in the sense of if, let's say, hypothetically speaking, and the probability is there, that uh, the state of capture report is is set aside. In your view, how would that scenario play out, Udo? Because I think the other one is, is pretty obvious in, in, in what might happen or what the, the president is required to do. Well, one never knows what the opposition has up, up their sleeves and one needs to know who understand what the, how noisy the opposition will be and the media, how the media will handle it. Knowing the South African media and its ownership, they will certainly hammer this big time and they blow it out of context and they will ride that, that horse until it collapses. I don't think that it'll be too wise to, to just brush things aside when you have total clarity all the way and always be a step ahead in order to actually get the credibility and the weight and, and that President Zuma seems to have, to have enough chutzpah and to, enough facts on which he has and to, to, stand his, to stand his man, which he will do, and the opposition will therefore not be too big in their reaction towards the, this kind of situation. Mm. But in terms of the confidence in not only uh, the issue around state capture, whether there is a concerted effort to try and rid society of this particular uh, cancer, if you will, Mr. Niehaus, you're not of the view that if this particular remedial action were to be set aside, that it would create the impression somehow of a larger-than-life kind of campaign to try and, and protect the, the, the president? No, I don't think so. In fact, the legal procedures that are at hand are absolutely clear. I personally, and I can express my personal view about this, think that the state of capture report is a particularly poorly written report and that it is full of innuendo and very low on facts. So I think there's a very real chance that that state of capture report could be set aside and that there would be good reasons, also legal reasons, to do so. And that should not then be construed as some kind of protection of the president, but it should also reflect, if it happens, on the quality of work that the previous public protector had delivered. But let us keep that for another time and let us leave it in the hands of the commission that is to be appointed to make those decisions. The important thing for me at this stage is that we follow the correct procedures and I very sincerely would like to make a call on the opposition parties not to try and play 
simple politics with this because they've done so up to now and they've used the state capture report for their own political purposes rather than to serve the country. The issue of state capture is hugely important. It is very important that we come to the bottom of this matter. But it cannot be something which is simply a narrow investigation into a particular period in our history relating to particular individual families in order to serve a particular political agenda. State capture has been part of South African society for, as I've said before, decades if not centuries. Let us get to the bottom of this and understand it because it also will help us to understand why it is so intractable in our country that white monopoly capital coming from colonialism and from colonialism of a special type continues to determine the lives and also the economic futures of the majority of South Africans, especially Africans. These are important issues. And these issues will determine how the future of South Africa looks and it will also determine whether the majority of South Africans, especially Africans, will be able to have control over this economy and that our economy will reflect the demography of our country. All right, Carney House MKMVA NEC member. We'll wrap it up with Udof Huza. Uh, very briefly, whether this is more expedient or a tactical retreat on the part of Zuma. I would think a, a tactical one. And I would also believe, you know, on a much lighter note, Zimbabwe's President Mugabe has been declared dead about 10 times. So he, said, he himself said that he must be more divine than Jesus Christ. So in that context, and he's, he's always, always been resilient. I would laugh, still but alive. I think that's using the, the Lord's name in vain. But anyway, I get it. I just want to say that, that he, he, he's not being, being just walked over. Mm. And I think the opposition knows that too. That yet they believe that they are successful in what they are doing. And they will stick to, what, to, to, they will stick to the guns. All right, so thanks so much, uh, Udo Fruza, independent political analyst, joining us in studio, reflect, uh, reflecting on the partial retraction of the uh, president's plea that uh, the uh, report not be sent back to the public protector for further investigation. But the main plea, of course, still stands. We take a quick break. We'll see you at 6.30.